So in this video, we're going to see our first full uh, PMCC hypothesis test. Data is collected from eight students to determine whether there is a positive correlation between their scores in a national exam and the number of hours spent revising. So here we have the exam scores, the number of hours spent revising. Conduct a PMCC hypothesis test at the 5% level to determine whether there is evidence to support a positive correlation between their exam scores and the number of hours spent revising. Okay, so what we need to do to start off with is def to define rho. So rho is the population correlation coefficient. And we need to define that in context. So we start off by stating let rho be the population correlation coefficient. between exam scores and uh, the number of hours spent revising. OK, so we need to define rho in context first. That's our opening statement. Then we have the null hypothesis, H0, which is always the same for our hypothesis tests, and its rho is equal to 0. So we assume that there is no correlation in the parent population. Then the alternative hypothesis, well, we are trying to determine whether there is a positive correlation. That's what we're testing. So that must be rho is greater than zero. Consequently, that means it's a one tail test because you are just looking at one direction. So one tail. The next thing that we need to do is we need to find our uh, value of r. Now, in the majority of exam questions, that you will do and see, the value of R might be calculated in part A. And uh, you might not have it like this. It might just be done with uh, summary statistics. OK, so let's find R. And um, we're going to do that straight on the calculator. So that means we need to type all the data in. OK, so. 205, 236, 158, 169, 172, 264, 219, 82, uh, 26, 28, 20, 15, 16, 21, 20, and 10. Okay. So the value of R is 0.774. To three sig fig. Okay, so generally we give uh, R to three sig fig. You can go to four decimal places if you like, but usually you see it written to three. Okay, now we need to find the critical value. So, as part of my hypothesis test, what I'm writing down, I would say that for n is equal to eight, because there's eight bits of data, the 5% critical value is, now this is where you need to go to your tables, okay, so on page 12 of the tables, left hand side, and you need a one tail test at 5%, so we're going right to the left hand side, then we're going down to n is equal to 8, and we get 0 0.6215. So 0 0.6215. Now, um, what that means is, now the best way to interpret this is using a number line. So here's minus 1, here's 0, and here's 1. So 0 0.6215 is about there. And so this is my critical region, that region there. Anything that falls within that region, I will reject the null hypothesis, inclusive. So uh, if R is equal to 0 0.6215 or greater than that up to 1, inclusive, then I reject the null hypothesis. 
0.774 is my R value, which is going to go inside the critical region. Now, you don't need to draw this number line, but it's there to help you. If it's tricky, draw a picky, right? Um, and it's there to help you identify whether you're rejecting or failing to reject. So, we can say that 0.774 is greater than 0.6215. So, the result is significant. So, we reject H0. Now, we're not quite done. We must then finally write a concluding statement that is non-committal. Now, what we mean by non-committal is you cannot uh, definitely say one way or the other. This does not mean that the parent population is definitely positively correlated. All we have here is evidence to suggest that it is. Okay, so what we can write down is that, um, so the result is significant, so we reject H0. There is evidence to suggest. So you can see how kind of, you know, wishy-washy it is in the sense of, you know, we're not, we're not definitely saying one thing or the other. There is evidence to suggest that there is a positive correlation between exam scores and the number of hours spent revising. Okay, so that is what I need to write down to answer this exam question. Now, if you've not met hypothesis testing before, you might feel, oh, that's quite a lot of stuff I've got to write down and remember. Once you've done it a few times, you will really get into the hang of it. Um, it's, you know, it's, um, it's essentially kind of like filling in the blanks. Is that you could write out a performer for this of just filling in the blanks, so this is what I need to write down. It's quite easy to kind of train yourself to get to this point. So uh, in the coming videos, we'll go through a few more examples just so you can see um, the different ways of wording our conclusions and how we deal with uh, a two-tail test and uh, things like that.